Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now this is the ASUS GTS 450 Top Edition graphics card. I didn't intend on reviewing it today, but after spending 4 hours trying to untangle the Christmas lights unsuccessfully, I decided I need a break, so here we are. Welcome to Sunday's video. Released in 2010 for £120 or $140, the 450 is the most powerful and last GTS named card ever made. Those three simple letters signified that this GPU had a place somewhere in the mid-range video card market, and by the time it released in 2010, 10, Nvidia had already gained quite the reputation for making a lot of noise at this specific price point, with previous releases like the 6600 and 8800 more than satisfying the budget PC gamer. Not to mention that the GTX 460, Nvidia's earlier and top end release was already making significant waves in the mid range market, so with a sub £150 gap to fill, did the GTS 450 live up to the success of its popular predecessors and more specifically, how does this ASUS version fare today? With a 925MHz core clock and 1850MHz shader clock, as well as 1GB of GDDR5 VRAM, it was more than capable of running some of the most popular titles of its release year with ease, and because it features this awesome looking direct CU cooler, with included green speed stripes, it does a great job of staying cool and therefore quiet too. As you can see I've added a temperature reading to the overlay for convenience. Power wise you should power this with no less than a 400 watt PSU with one 6 pin connector, and the card even supports SLI, which will definitely be a video for another day. Not only does this card support DX11, meaning it's capable on paper of running every game out there, but it supports DX12 too. So what do you say we stick this in the Ryzen 5 1600 system and see how it handles a few popular titles? I've included the results from both 1080p and 720p tests. Assassin's Creed Black Flag first because Origins was a definite no-go here. With the game set to the lowest settings we saw an average of 24 frames per second at 1080p, although as you can tell by the percentile figures there wasn't much stutter, just slow overall gameplay. At 720p things improved to see a nice average of 39 fps, even if I did have to keep things set to low in this case. In Battlefield 1's opening level the game held up quite well on the GTS 450 at 1080p and we saw 38 frames per second. Once again there wasn't too much stutter, likely thanks to the CPU, but the experience was a pretty pleasant one. At 720p the same can be said, though with an average frame rate of 56 this is definitely the best way to enjoy Battlefield 1. When it comes to Prey, the 2017 release, once again the GTS 450 can't quite manage to hold firm a steady frame rate at 1080p with that 0.1% figure outlining the stuttering problem. The settings are turned all the way down so I decided to opt for 720p instead and behold we have another playable experience. It seems that this is an ideal budget solution for lower res monitors so far. Good old Dirt 4 now, another game in the Dirt series that's fairly well optimised yet much more demanding than its run on anything predecessor Dirt 3. At 1080p the game struggled a little bit, with some stutter here and there, but once again 720p made for an ideal resolution and reduced the juddery gameplay quite a bit. Sure it won't look as good, but it runs good enough to enjoy it without any significant issues. Finally it's The Witcher 3. As you probably expected 1080p wasn't really achievable on any setting with the GTS, but switching to 720p, albeit with a slightly customised texture resolution from the INI file, allowed us to hit at least 30fps most of the time. It's not an ideal experience, but it's certainly more playable at this reduced resolution. The GTS 450 made for a great budget card in 2010 as shown by the first gameplay clips even though it will struggle today. Of course it all depends on the game you're playing but I think this has given us a generally good idea of the GTS 450's lifespan. If you have a lower resolution monitor it can still play your favourite games at 720p and may be able to do so for another year or so. I look forward to seeing how similarly priced cards of today handle games 7 years from now though and to finalise anyone Anyone who invested in one of these for a low cost build in 2010 definitely made a good choice. It must be those green racing stripes that keeps this thing going. Guys thank you for watching this video, if you liked it leave a like on it, if you didn't leave a dislike on it, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and hopefully I'll see you all in the next video.